Good morning, we're Jacob and Jenny, and we have arrived in Ghent, Belgium. Yeah, it, we're in another beautiful, historic Belgian town, uh, and we just can't wait to explore this. Uh, we have a day here, so we're going to try to make the most of it. Let's go! So, Ghent here in Belgium is a noteworthy historic city. It used to be one of the most populated cities back in the 14th century in Europe and it was known for its wool trade. So there was a lot of people working in the textile industry and so it was one of the most populated cities and with the wool trade it brought all the wealth and you'll see that today in all of the incredibly stunning buildings throughout the area. So let's go! We're starting off our day with a visit to the St. Nicholas Church, which is a Gothic style church that was built in the 14th century during the heyday of Ghent's wealth. Uh, you can really see how impressive of a building it is. I guess a lot of the materials were imported because they just had so much money they could get the best materials from wherever they wanted to build this pretty impressive church. One thing I noticed when going into St. Nicholas Church was a lot of the churches we've been to in Europe have a Catholic influence and so they look very elaborately adorned, gold and all of that. So I noticed when we came in that it didn't quite look like that. There were still pretty fancy decorations but I didn't notice the, what I would say, all of the Catholic ones. So. As we read a little bit more, we realized this is not a Catholic church, it's Protestant. And it, they got rid of a lot of it during the Reformation time. They built some of it back during the Counter-Reformation, so you still will see some of the elaborate adornments, but it's not quite the same as when it was originally built. Oh, it's narrow. <laughs> oh, narrow, very narrow. Oh, it's very narrow. So we are now at the top of the belfry here in Ghent, and we are up very high. <laughs> this belfry was designed to house the important papers of the town in the 1300s. Um, the, it's noteworthy for being the, made of the same stone that they imported during the heyday of Ghent and also having a dragon on the top that is said to help protect the city. You would think that after coming up to these things on so many trips I'd be used to this. I'm not used to this. <laughs> <laughs> So we just got down from the Belfort. Oh, it was a beautiful view up there. I mean, it's not a great sunny day, but you can still see everywhere in the city, uh, including our next stop, which is right over here now, is St. Bavo's Cathedral. Just a hop, skip, and a jump away from the Belfort. Uh, and we will be, I think, going inside to see more of this giant church. So we just read a sign that said you have to book your ticket online to see the altarpiece, which is the noteworthy part of the cathedral. So I am just uh, trying to make that happen right now. Sending a signal. The highlight of the church here is the Lamb of God painting. It is one of the first uh, oil paintings ever and was really a departure from how paintings were done at the time. Uh, we're just kind of, it used to be just generic figures of angels and things like that. All the people in this painting have very lifelike faces, uh, very um, unique expressions. It's so detailed. Apparently such an important painting that it has been stolen from this church like a dozen times. Napoleon took it, the 
Austrians took it, the Germ Hitler took it in World War II. Um, but each time it keeps getting brought back, uh, but there is still one panel that they still have not located. Um, so they're still actually actively investigating where that is, but right now what you see in there is a really well done replica of the original uh, panel. It's not every day that you get to see such a historically important work of art. Where do I want to eat lunch? And it's cold. So we got a little hungry and we decided to stop for lunch to get some local specialties, including some local beers. Can't be that. Uh, I wasn't expecting this to be this big, uh, but I got the water zooey, which is a get specialty. Um, I guess it's traditionally made with fish, but it's more, um, more commonly now it's made with chicken. Let's see, this is dry, like a creamy soup and stew kind of thing. Oh, that's good. Mm. And the chicken is really tender in it, and the soup is so creamy and flavorful. Mm. Ooh, that's really good on a nice cold day like today. I do have to say, like, it tastes like the inside of a hot pie, <laughs> but a little bit more soup like. So we are now on what is called Graffiti Street, and if you couldn't tell, there's a lot of graffiti around here. So the point of this street is that you can actually freely graffiti on this street, but only this street here. So it gave a place for people in the city to show off their street art. So this area, because it's pretty much free to be tagged however you would like, um, won't look the same anytime you come here. So it actually would be really interesting to come here on a couple of different trips to, to see if you can find something different. We just found the cutest little candy shop here. Uh, we were talking to the owner inside a little bit and um, they have what is a very iconic candy here in Ghent and it's supposed to be, these ones are shaped a little differently than some of the other places. Usually they're cones and they're called like, uh, I don't know the name, uh, but it's supposed to mean like little noses. Um, Usually they look like cones, like a little nose. These ones are shaped like a little face. Uh, but the owner was saying that his grandfather uh, invented the recipe for these. This place has been here since 1904, so they've been making candy for a very long time. Uh, I'm excited to try these. Uh, let's just go. Oh, it's very interesting. <laughs> There's like a, not hard candy on the outside, but a little bit tougher. And then the inside is so gooey. Just like the sweet, mmm, I mean, not quite grape, maybe a grape flavoring. Mmm, very sugary, very sweet, uh, like a gelatinous kind of candy. It's pretty good. Oh, it's very sweet and very chewy. That is something that I could not eat every day because it's super, super sweet, but when I was a kid, I bet I would have loved having this just like sugar bomb. So we are now at the Castle of the Counts. And this place is noteworthy because it looks like a castle, so you think it's here to protect the city, but actually it was built more so to intimidate and imprison people in the city. It has a long history of torture and um, intimidation and so we're here to find out a little bit more about that and kind of one of the things the city is known for. So we've been listening to our audio guides as we've been going through the castle. Uh, it's kind of silly. Uh, I think it's targeted towards a little younger age but it's fun to listen to, give some history of the castle, kind of some, what some of the different rooms are. Um, but now we've come up to the top of the castle and ooh, just wow 
breathtaking views of the three main towers of Ghent. Uh, you have St. Nicholas, the Belfort, and St. Bavos Cathedral back there. And you can just see the whole city. It's really impressive. I almost like this view better than on top of the Belfort because you can actually see the Belfort from this view, which is one of the prettiest buildings here. Uh, so I highly recommend coming to to Gravelstein, Count, the Castle of the Counts, uh, if only just for the view. So we just finished up at the castle and I will say that even though the audio guide is a little cheesy, it's definitely necessary. The castle is pretty empty. There's, you know, a bunch of empty rooms and so you really would know what you're looking at if you didn't have the audio guide. The audio guide does come with a tour though, so you don't have to pay extra for it. Um, so take advantage of that while you're there. Whew, this was a busy day today. Yeah, but definitely worth it. Ghent has been just fabulous. It's been wonderful. Um, it's been a it's a beautiful city. Definitely recommend it for a day. Uh, make a stop here. Uh, we still have a few more days in Belgium. Uh, so make sure you subscribe so you get to see more of this wonderful country with us. Night.